Hey, VC, how's it going? Right, okay. Very quick video. Um, going back two, maybe three years now. Fred Big Star 1000 uh, did a thing where each week he was doing a Give Me 10 um, for a different year. So started up in 1970, went right through to 1989. Uh, and I joined in as well, shared my favourite um, albums from that each year as well as it went along, as did many people in the VC. It's just quite uh, a shame that it finished in 1989 because 1990 is one of my favourite years of music. So I've been meaning to do a Gimme 10 1990 for a little while, so here we go. First up, and in no particular order, Depeche Mode Violator. Quite often in the VC, um, there are threads going around about perfect 10 albums, and this is definitely one of those. Actually, there's two or three records in this list now, which would probably be in my top 10 records of all time. Uh, yeah, this is faultless from start to finish, nine tracks. It works perfectly as an album as a whole. Um, everything about it, right down to the, the iconic cover art there. The four promo videos that went with the singles, all directed by Anton Corbin, were just beautiful, as you'd expect. Um, yeah, I've read quite a bit about this album over the years. Apparently, the previous couple of albums, um, the, I said the two that preceded this, um, the main songwriter, Martin Gore, had produced pretty much um, fully formed demos. Um, so when they actually went in to record the albums, they were just pretty much recreating his, his original demos. This was slightly different. Um, the demos were far, uh, far more basic, uh, far more sparse. There's a lot more room for the, the band to provide their input, and obviously the album benefits from that. Um, one thing that I didn't realise, which I heard recently, was that um, the album title, Violator, was a bit tongue-in-cheek. The band were just trying to come up with the most heavy metal sounding album title that they could, so that's where they got Violator from which is quite amusing when you think about it. But uh, my only gripe about this is that the closing song on this uh, clean isn't, well, it doesn't feel like a closing song, basically. It feels like there should be something that comes after it. So I suppose what I'm saying is it's not long enough, but yeah, that's my only gripe. But apart from that, absolutely perfect. Right. Now, Violate, I think, came out in March 1990. This album, if my memory serves me correctly, came out towards the end of the year, I think around October, early November. This is... Um, Behaviour by the Pet Shop Boys. Now the reason why I'm showing this one next is because Neil Tennant has, has gone on record and basically said that the band were incredibly influenced by Violator when, when they were putting this album together. They've gone for a more natural and more analogue sound. Um, the previous albums are far more bombastic, you know, that big pop sound. This is a lot, a lot more laid back, um, a far more inward looking record. I think it contains their best record, well, sorry, their best song, which is um, Being Boring. Interesting, I was reading about this the other day. I think every single for the previous four years in the UK had gone top 10. Uh, and when they released Being Boring, which was the second single off this album, it didn't get in the top 20, never won the top 10. So, which is an absolute crime when you think about it, because as I say, for me, it's their best song. A song about, you know, looking back over one's life, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, this, I, I still think this is their best record. And if you haven't heard it, check it out. Right, okay, the Pixies, Boss and Over. I think this is their third full length album, isn't it? Uh, yeah, not my favourite of theirs. I prefer both Do Little and Surfer Rosa, but still an absolutely great record. I think it's dated pretty well, actually. I've been playing this quite a lot recently. Um, it's got a bit of a surf rock sound in places, um, a little bit space rocky, but I think overall it's, it's more of a straight ahead rock sound, you know. So, but yeah, it works really well. The first single off this, Valeria, was uh, actually the, the first Pixies single to get in the UK. Top 40, which when you think about some of the records I put out prior to that, is incredible. But there you go. Right now, this is my favorite Public Enemy album. This is Through the Black Planet. I know a lot of people would go with uh, It Takes a Nation of Millions, but uh, no, this is definitely the one for me from that sort of gold, golden period of hip hop. Um, yeah, a record that could never ever be made now. I think Chip D has said there's some, like 2,000 samples on this record. Obviously, this was made in a time when getting clearance for, for using samples wasn't really a thing. Um, now it would cost you millions and millions of dollars or millions of pounds, whatever, to, 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 to make this record. So it would never ever happen. But you know, the singles on this uh, Fight the Power, Welcome to the Terror Dome, 911 is a joke. Now, I didn't hear this album probably till the late 90s. I'm probably right in saying that I heard Duran Duran's version of 911 is a joke before I heard Public Enemies. So there's something. Check it out if you haven't heard it. Right. Right then. Time's up by Living Colour. Uh, I like all this uh, sort of um, 
funky metal stuff that came out in the late 80s, early 90s. Obviously, you had the Chili Peppers doing it. Um, Extreme put out Pornography in 1990, which I could quite easily have uh, included in this list because I, I love that album. Um, the Electric Boys put out their debut, I think, in 1990. But I think that um, Living Colour were the pick of the bunch. Um, yeah, they just mixed up styles effortlessly. So it goes from metal to funk to soul. Um, there's sort of an African vibe here and there. It really it works really well. Um, I like all of the the first three albums I put out. Um, Vivid was the debut, then this, and then Stain, which is more of a hard rock record. All of them are worth picking for you if you haven't heard them. The big single on this was Love, Re sorry, Love Rears It's Over Your Head. Uh, an absolutely classic, one of my favorite records of the 90s. So yeah, cool. Right, okay, next up, Extricate by The Fall. Now, most of these records are, are albums that I heard back in the day, back in 1990 or a year or two afterwards, when they were still relevant, I suppose. I only heard this record for the first time last year. I bought a collection of 19 Fall records, so I spent a good couple of months just listening to pretty much nothing but, nothing but The Fall. Um, and this is the album that I kept going back to. Um, I knew a couple of tracks off this beforehand, and I think wrongly, you know, certainly for, because of the single uh, telephone thing, I, I would have thought this was going to sound a bit more Manchester than, than it does. Um, it's actually got more of a rockabilly thing going on, which is really nice. Um, the best tune on here though, Billy's Dead, an absolute classic. Um, obviously it's famous for being the only full song to, uh, to top John Peel's Festive 50 list. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful stuff. Uh, I say, I, I should do a, a full video actually, you know, just talking about the, the records that I picked up because uh, it really was an education going through 19 full albums in, a, in such a short period of time. So, right, okay, right then, I've said how much before I love this album. This is Thunder Backstreet, simply their debut album. Um, one of the great British rock albums, well, one of the great British rock bands. Yeah, this is a band, I mean, I, I sort of mentioned before that um, so between sort of 88 and 92, I pretty much only listen to rock music. Um, and I don't really listen to much of the stuff that those bands made after that time period, you know, so I still go back and listen to those records, but anything after 92, 93, I, I don't really listen to. But this band, I have, I have kept following. Um, I go and see them whenever they tour. Um, the, the difference is they had a great songwriter, Luke Morley. Um, every track on this is brilliant. It's got a cover of uh, Spencer Davis, um, Give Me Some Loving, but apart from that, um, 10 wonderful original tunes. But the, the real selling point is Danny Bauer's vocals. One of, I say, just one of the great vocalists, irrespective of genre. I, I love his voice so much. Um, I say they're, they're a great live band. I, I can't fault this. I mean, some people might not know this, but uh, yeah, if you like your rock music, then check this out. Right, okay. Um, Jellyfish, another debut album, Belly Button. A really underrated album. This this album should have been massive, and I think it just really suffers from being, you know, released you know, the wrong time. You know, if it had come out four or five years later, in amongst all that Britpop nonsense in the UK, this would have fit in quite well. You know, the songs are um, very much Beatles influenced, um, but with a, a much sweeter vocal, sort of a, a 10cc or ELO vocal over the top. But the strength of the songwriting is incredible, you know. Just great, great pop songs. Um, so much so, one of the tracks was covered um, by a, a pop band in the UK, McFly, and had a number one number one single with it in the, in the, the mid noughties uh, uh, Baby's Coming Back. But yeah, I mean, I, re I remember this coming out, and, and they were very much sort of lumped in with a lot of the rock bands at the time, um, just because I don't think anybody really knew what to do with them. But um, the single that I remember most was uh, the first single off the album, uh, The King Is Half Undressed. It scraped into the UK Top 40, an absolutely wonderful pop song. Check it out if you don't know it. But yeah, better go. Right, another debut album, this is Black Crow Shake Your Money Maker. Not their best album, that was the one that came after it. Um, Southern Harmony Musical Companion. If you haven't heard it, check it out. But this is a great debut. They were sort of lumped in with a lot of the rock and metal bands at the time, but um, their sound was more Stones, more Faces influenced. But yeah, wonderful stuff. Um, they had some great self pen singles on this, the likes of Jealous Again, Twice As Hard. Um, but the, the song that really sold this record was uh, Hard To Handle, cover of the uh, Otis Redding song. And the fact that Chris Robinson did such a good job of singing that song says so much about his vocals, you know. Hope you get the chance to see his band now, uh, the Chris Robinson Brotherhood. Definitely worth checking out. Um, 
But yeah, this is a this is a really good record and an album back in 1990 that I played a hell of a lot. And just finally, a little bit of a cheat this one. This is the Cure mixed up. This is a remix album, so all of the tracks on this came out throughout the 1980s and then were remixed for this collection. Double vinyl. The reason why I'm showing this is because it's, it's probably the Cure album that I played the most over the years. Um, yeah, all of the mixes are very much of the time. They've got that 1990 sound about it. So yeah, I've always really enjoyed this. So if you, if you don't know it, check it out. Cheers.